February 1956. In the heart of New York, Operation Big City was underway. A Ford Mercury, specially adapted with a hidden exhaust pipe, pumped out bacteria onto the streets of Manhattan. Undercover agents entered the city's subway system. Their cases equipped with tiny motors, which covertly dispersed the bacteria Bacillus globuli. Ten years later, the army returned. Light bulbs filled with bacteria were dropped in front of trains and down ventilation shafts to test how far the bacteria would spread through the subway system. For years, these public experiments were kept secret from the citizens of New York. The army faithfully filmed its own experiments. This Washington, D.C. bus station was the site of another secret test. Thirty similar trials were conducted at public locations all across America. One of the earliest experiments had fatal consequences. In 1951, the Army sprayed the bacteria Sirasha marsisums over San Francisco. Eleven hospital patients developed a mysterious infection, and within days, Edward Nevin died from an illness caused by the same bacteria. In 1953, CIA employee Frank Olson leaped through his bedroom window on the 10th floor of this New York hotel. Nine days earlier, a fellow CIA scientist had secretly spiked his drink with LSD. It took the government 22 years to acknowledge its role in Frank Olson's death. Another cover-up concerned the death of a civilian, Harold Blower. Suffering from depression, he was a patient at the New York State Psychiatric Institute. There, he and five other patients were unwittingly tested with mind-altering drugs by doctors who'd signed a secret contract with the U.S. Army. Again, it was more than 20 years before his family discovered the truth. In 1975, I was living in California with my two children. And there was a knock on the door, and two people in uniform were at the door. They said they were from the Pentagon. They wanted to talk to me about the death of my father. And I told them that um, my father had been dead a long time. They came in and they told me that they had found papers at the Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland. And these papers had information about my father's death. It took Harold Blower's family 15 years of fighting the government in court before a judge's ruling established the facts. On January 8, 1953, between 9.53 and 9.57 a.m., my father was injected with 450 milligrams, or 6.47 milligrams kilograms of body weight of EA1298. According to the drug study notes, at 9.57, my father became very restless and had to be restrained by the nurse. He began sweating profusely and flailing his arms wildly. At 10.01, he pulled up in bed, his body stiffened, his teeth clenched, and he began frothing at the mouth. Similar reactions continued for over an hour. My father was still talking and moving his legs randomly at 11.05. Finally, at about one and a half hours after the injection had begun, my father lapsed into a coma. He was pronounced dead at 12.15. A brilliant microbiologist and a suspected multiple murderer. The man believed to be behind the 2001 anthrax attacks was an army researcher who killed himself this week as the government moved toward indicting him and seeking the death penalty. A bizarre turn for the probe into the anthrax-laced letters that killed five and chilled the nation just a few weeks after 9-11. 
For years, the only known suspect was Stephen Hatfill, an Ivan's colleague at Fort Detrick, the Army's biodefense labs in Maryland, who was exonerated just weeks ago. Officials say authorities were investigating whether Ivan's released anthrax as a way of testing the vaccine he developed here at Fort Detrick, just down the block from his Maryland home. As police checked on Ivan's family, neighbors said the FBI had been a constant presence nearby for a year, conducting surveillance. They just didn't know the target. But we never suspected Bruce. I mean, we never, you know, and I still don't, you know, look at him unfavorably or anything because he was a really, you know, decent guy. But while she had no suspicions, her mother said it might make sense. We knew they were looking at someone. Uh, we knew that Bruce worked at Fort Detrick. We knew that he worked with pathogens. You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that they might be looking at him. But some targeted in the attacks want more. We need to know exactly how Mr. Ivans was involved, if he was involved, how this uh, relates to the case. Officials say prosecutors have not yet closed the investigation, leaving open the possibility Ivans was not the only suspect. Sagar Megani, The Associated Press, Washington.